Welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back to another episode of Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Well, you join me this evening, uh, continuing our little Promox demo. If you watched the last video, um, then you would have seen already um, that we've successfully installed Proxmox virtual environment 9.0.3 on our minis forum, MS A2. Did I mention that we're obsessed with that little box here at Hancock's VMware Half Hour? So we're going to carry on uh, with Proxmox. And at the end of that video, I did actually basically say that what we were going to do, we were going to migrate our Hyper V VMs. And if you've been watching these videos, then you will remember I did um, a video on showing you how we can migrate from VMware vSphere. Uh, to Hyper-V that was hosted on our minis forum MS-A2, our little server. And we migrated successfully um, a handful of virtual machines, the same test subject virtual machines that we've been using in our migrations. Uh, and tell you what I'll do, um, we'll basically get right to it. Um, so I'm dialed in uh, via uh, putty via an SSH session. Um, now I've done a couple of other things. Um, I've added um, an NFS export off another NAS um, because I was actually basically going to um, migrate our Hyper V VMs onto an NFS data store um, because NFS data stores support the uh, QCOW2 format. Um, if you actually basically want to use the raw format, then you've got to use block storage. So you've got to use a local LVM. So sort of kind of changed my mind um, that we do have, um, if I run a command, uh, PVESM status, then it actually shows us the I suppose the data stores, if we're looking for things that are equivalent to VMware vSphere or VMware ESXi, if we actually basically use the command PVESM status, then it shows us all our data stores that we can put store virtual machines, containers, ISOs, disk images, all of the above. So you can see there that we've got NFS underscore Cyrus Nash for underscore VCA VMs. That's NFS. Um, NFS underscore ISOs, of course, is where we've got our ISOs installed, which we did in the last video. Um, our local dash LVM is our LVM thin storage for blocks, which we would where we would put raw disks on. So that's where we're gonna we're gonna put we're gonna convert. Uh, we're going to do sort of kind of two conversions, really, that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we're going to convert the uh, VHDX format to a QCOW2 format. And then I'm going to import that QCOW2 format into a raw disk in the local LVM for performance. Anyway, I just actually wanted to show you um, here um, that this is our windows partition um and if i have a little look at lsk block then you will see that the first nvme disk here that we've got this is our samsung this is where we've installed uh proxmox and then our other nvme disk here remember of course that was that one terabyte uh p310 crucial device which actually basically is installed in our a and e key which has got hyper v which has got windows and of course, all we've done is mounted that NTFS partition in Proxmox. Read only. Can't do any writes to it, but it's ideal. And if I basically have a little look at the VMs there, then you can see that all those VMs there, you may remember uh, from the video that we did when we did the um, the migrations, um, Abistogrammo, Danio, Guppy, Hoplo, Labio, Molo, Molly, uh, Pleco, uh, Rasbora, and Sawtell. Those are all the VMs that we successfully migrated. So we're going to take one of those VMs today, and I'm just going to show you how fast um, we can migrate these. So I've already created a handful of scripts. 
Uh, I can't remember now where I put them. Uh, where did I put my scripts? Ah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so the first script I've got, um, and this is really just for demonstration purposes as to how quickly we can actually migrate VM, uh, migrate Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machines that we've got access to. So these could be on an NFS, these could be on a USB flash drive, they could be on an external hard drive, uh, or they could even be on a partition um, that are on this particular server uh, that you've used WinSCP to basically get those VHDXs up to. So anyway, I'm just going to run this demo.2.sh just to show you how fast that we can get virtual machines converted and running on Proxmox. So here we go. So the first thing basically it does is it converts the VHDX uh, to QCAV2. Um, then we've actually basically created a lot of VM and we've created a VM. Now we're actually basically importing that QCAV2 disk into our block storage. And then once we've actually basically done that, then basically we're going to basically just set the BIOS to UEFI. Then basically we're going to set the boot order and then we're going to start the VM. Um, and once the VM's actually basically started, um, I'll just, or once it's actually basically just finished transferring, which does, shouldn't take very long. And of course you've got to remember that this is a 40 gig disk here that we're manipulating. Um, so that's it. We're done. And if I actually basically just go up and look at a pistogramma here, and the console, then you can see basically it's booting. There we go. How about that? Fast, fast conversions uh, to Proxmox. I wish we could do them that fast to Hyper-V, and I wish we could do them that fast to VMware vSphere. Uh, now, of course, we can take, um, we can do that process with any virtual machine. So we could we could have done it on a VMDK if I had a VMDK handy. Uh, or any other format that we can actually convert. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to our um, SSH prompt. Um, and this time uh, I've got another VM we're going to do. We're going to do um, Hotplow this time. Uh, but this time I'm actually basically going to explain the commands. Um, and I will put these scripts on GitHub for you um, so that you can actually have a little look at the commands that I'm using that work for me here in the lab and work for me uh, when I'm doing conversions um, for clients as well. So anyway, so the first, so what we're doing here, uh, we're converting a Hyper-V VHDX disk to Proxmox QK2. Um, the VM name is going to be Hotplow. The VM ID is 102. So in Proxmox, every VM has to have a number. Um, our source VHDX, as I showed you, is in mount NTFS VMs hotflow pi hole underscore two dot VHDX. That's how Veeam created it. Our destination, and this of course is completely just temporary. Um, our destination QK2 file is in root hotplow.qk2. So that's throw away. Once we've actually basically imported that into our block storage, we can throw that away. And the command we're going to use is QEMU dash IMG space convert dash F space VHDX space dash O QK2 dash P for progress followed by effectively source and destination. And that's going to convert our Hyper-V VHDX disk to a Promox friendly QK2 format with progress. So I'm going to hit enter. This isn't going to take very long. Now this is 40 gig here that's being converted. So there we go, we're done. Um, you know, this, this, is, this MSA2, I kid you not, is faster than anything that we have here currently in the lab. And I must admit, um, we do have a lot of stuff. Okay, so next command. So we're now actually going to create the VM. So QM space create space 102. So 102 is our ID. Dash dash name, hotplo friendly name, dash dash memory 4096. We'll give it four gigaram. Dash dash net. 
uh, vert io that's the network interface uh, bridge equals vmbr0 so we're going to create a vm with 4 gig of ram with the vert io network and a vm id of 102 done okay so now we're actually going to import so i'm going to use qm import disk space 102 followed by the path to our qk2 format to our destination, our data store, local dash LVM. So again, we're importing the QCAO2 disk into storage local dash LVM. And I'll hit enter. Now this does take this does take 60 seconds or so. Uh, but again, you know, it is actually basically transferring 40 gig, you know, so this isn't one or two megabytes. This is actually 40 gig that is actually basically moving um, into the local LVM. Now, if you have a QCAO2 formatted disk, uh, you can right click that disk um, in the inventory and say move and select. Um, and I was actually going to do that, but I thought, well, there's probably not really a lot of point in creating a QCAO2 disk on NFS and then actually basically using the move to anyway. So we won't bother doing it. OK, so QM set 102 again. So we're setting the virtual machine 102 dash dash scuzzy hardware so we're actually basically telling the virtual machine that we actually basically want to use vert io dash scuzzy dash pci and we want to set that local disk as disk zero so we're attaching the imported disk as scuzzy zero with the vert io controller for better performance okay next command um QM set 102 dash dash cause 4 dash dash memory 4096 dash dash net zero. Um, so we're setting the cause to 4, the RAM to 4 gig, and configuring the network interface. So now I'm switching the BIOS to UEFI because these virtual machines that we've migrated are UEFI. They're not legacy MBR or legacy BIOS, they're UEFI. So I'm going to hit enter. Um, now we're going to change the boot order so this is a bit like in the old-fashioned days when you used to basically hit f1 or delete and select the boot order if we actually didn't actually do this then it would probably boot from the network so we actually want it to ensure that it boots on the attached disk that we've actually attached followed by enter so qm space config 102 that's actually just going to show us the current configuration before we start the machine um, and this really is just for my benefit, just for me to check that I've not actually basically done anything wrong and making a complete fool of myself, as per usual. So BIOS OVMF order SCSI 0, cause 4, memory 4096, um, meta name net SCSI, SCSI hardware, SM BIOS, VM Gen ID done. Okay, so the next command basically really is a QM space start space 102 boot the vm and we'll just drop out of this ssh session and we'll go back and have a little look at hotplow and there we go i haven't really got anything more to say um and uh, i'm just looking at the counters here that are ticking up uh and we're just coming up to 14 minutes um, so what I'm going to say is, um, thanks so much again for watching me, Andrew Hancock at Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Um, if you've liked this video, um, I have, um, then give me a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe and share. Um, if you don't like this video, then give me a thumbs down and tell me why you don't like it. Uh, but hopefully... Um, you know, with the amount of love that's out there in the community uh, for Proxmox, uh, I'm hoping to get lots of likes, lots of shares. Um, if you've got any questions or thoughts on Proxmox, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, XCP, um, then, you know, let's have a conversation. Um, drop them um, in the description and let's have a, a debate. Um, it is very early days uh, for Proxmox. I'm hoping maybe within the next 20 years um, we may see a change of interface and more polished and more enterprise ready. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but I think I would have long retired by then. Anyway, so again, thank you very much for watching and good night and God bless.